if you were watching the news, the FDA has just retracted the emergency use authorization of hydroxychloroquine. FDA, this is stat, FDA revokes emergency use ruling for hydroxychloroquine, the drug touted by Trump as a COVID-19 therapy. The high wire is doubling down once again. We have been at the poker table with hydroxychloroquine from the beginning. And I will tell you as a reporter, it's scary to keep reporting on something that you see being attacked by agencies as big as the WHO, as big as the FDA. What is the high wire thing? What, Del Bigtree, why are you still on this? Because something really, really stinks. Remember, there's hundreds of studies around the world that are showing incredible success with hydroxychloroquine. Last week, we reported that the Lancet had a study that apparently had more people, more continents, more people, millions of people around the world, the biggest study ever known of hydroxychloroquine that showed, oh my God, it doesn't have any effect at all. And the WHO jumped in on it, and everybody started reporting on it, except one problem. The thing was essentially a hoax. You had hydrox, here's the Lancet, the hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine with or without a my, uh, macrolide for treatment of COVID-19, a multinational registry analysis. Well, that multinational registry ended up being total baloney, run by a couple of con artists, and now it's retracted. Here it is, retracted, and we reported this last week. It is retracted. It is a big, stinking pile in the annals of science that everyone got behind saying, see, hydroxychloroquine really doesn't work. We still need the vaccine, right? Isn't that what this is about? We still need the vaccine because that treatment doesn't work. Well, now they've pulled that study. And you would think, well, there it is. We now found out that the WHO had stopped a trial on hydroxychloroquine because of this incredible Lancet discovery, which is now just a steaming pile of ridiculousness. Well, now the WHO has reinstated a trial. We're like, oh, good, great. But then, oddly, this week, the FDA is now polling the emergency use. Well, to get to the bottom of this, in the letter written by the FDA, I want to bring in Dr. Jim Meehan, who has been speaking very loudly about some of his concerns with what's happening around hydroxychloroquine. I saw your tweet. You basically are saying they are gunning for hydroxychloroquine, and it really doesn't make sense. Uh, just to start with, why, you know, what is happening? What is the FDA letter? What did it cover? Why, did it, why is it getting away from hydroxychloroquine, and what are its excuses right now? Well, those are all the, those are all the key questions, Dell. So th this revocation of emergency use was, is, once again, it's not based in science. They, they cited eight studies um, as the basis for their revocation, and those eight studies were weak, um, most of them were, were beneficial, but they were small. They put all the emphasis on one study by Tang, uh, T-A-N-G, and that was a study of only 150 subjects. Uh, it was a high-dose delivery of hydroxychloroquine. It was 1,200 milligrams. Um, somebody is not paying attention to what the clinicians out there are showing, like Dr. Right. Raul, who has over 3,000 patients treated right. with about 600 milligrams right. um, a day for 10 days and producing amazing results. But they're, they're padding these. They used um, basically the worst picking, studies. Right? They cherry-picked the worst right. studies. And, and so in some of these studies, there was actually references. I, I was shocked to see that some of these studies weren't even done this year. They were done before we even had a uh, coronavirus pandemic. Can you tell me about that? What were those studies there to prove? Well, because one of the reasons it's cherry picking, Dell, they're cherry picking negative studies to support the conclusion that they want to create and they want to thrust upon the public. They want to mislead us and deceive us because this is uh, the, the benefits that are coming from hydroxychloroquine and clinicians, which is the preferred treatment of choice by 55% of physicians that were polled really? by CERMO. Most physicians believe that hydroxychloroquine plus azithromycin plus zinc is one of the best ways to treat patients with COVID-19. It's important to treat them early, but most of these studies are being designed with the intention of failing. And that's what this, this whole you know, pattern of behavior looks like. Once again, I've seen it with 
um, vitamin C, seen it with vitamin D, and they're doing it with hydroxychloroquine. Why? Because hydroxychloroquine is safe. It is effective. At the short duration that it's used, it's safe. And uh, it, it's very effective. they to some older studies, right? Weren't they trying to say, well, there is some history that, that hydroxychloroquine has had heart issues? I mean, isn't that the argument they're making? How are they defending that? What is that argument coming from? Right. Well, once again, that argument is they're trying to cast fear, uncertainty, and doubt on a medication that is proving to be so effective. So how do you do that? Um, you create fear. You, you use studies that were using either high doses, uh, were used without zinc, weren't without azithromycin in high-risk patients, and you throw those into the eight studies that you're going to use to revoke the emergency authorization. You're you know, going here, to... Here, here, uh, Jim, I, you know, here's what I found really shocking. We looked up... Can we bring this up? Like, there's a lot of uses for hydroxychloroquine for since like 70 years now or something like that, whether it's, you know, lupus or arthritis or malaria. And we looked up and we, could, we only found 2017. We have that slide. In 2017, the United States alone, there was a massive use. I don't see the number on here. It, it had a number. Oh, oh what was it? There we go. 5,666,999 doses in one year in the United States of America. And I find it shocking. This is back in 2017. Where was the FDA then, right? I mean, it seems like there's two, two sides to this sword, right? If you're telling me you are suddenly concerned about a, a possible heart condition from hydroxychloroquine, where were you the last 70 years? Where were you for the 5 million doses that people used thinking it was safe, and, but the FDA knew it wasn't? I mean, to me, this is like, it's crazy. They, either way, they lose this argument, right? Either way, you have either been Absolutely. hiding a danger that you shouldn't have been for God knows what reason, or now you are just pointing out some tiny little issue that a few people had and trying to, as they say, make a mountain out of molehill. But in the middle of this, as you said, high-dose trials, there was an article out of Age of Autism that you brought to my attention. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, that, so that's some great like yours, it was some great investigative journalism from Age of Autism. They, they published recently this, uh, the WHO Solidarity and U UK Recovery Clinical Trials of HCQ using potentially fatal doses. The, the, both the Solidarity, which was the WHO study, the, the, a conglomeration of WHO trials all over the world, multiple sites. Um, the recovery was a UK study by Landry that was, was, um, again, kind of very similar to solidarity. Both studies were using massive, potentially lethal doses of hydroxychloroquine. They so just were, to be uh, clear, no I just wanted, for our viewers, we have two really different studies. You have the solidarity study is what they're calling it, being conducted by the WHO, which involves, you know, uh, uh, looking at sites in different uh, countries all around the world. And then you have the recovery study, which is being done in the UK, at, is it Oxford, I believe? And, that, and, and all of these are, right. are kind, sort of coming to this no clinical benefit. And what they mean is they're not seeing an advantage. Just as many people are dying or more. So tell me, um, you know, what is it? When they say lethal dose, what do they mean? Well, the, the dose is being used in both solidarity, the WHO trials, and the recovery, um, the UK trials, two independent studies they were both using um, levels that were about four times the maximum dose for any medical condition. There are no medical conditions at which these doses would be prescribed. In fact, when Landry was kind of um, confronted with these issues, it, he apparently was making some kind of careless mistake, um, believing and maybe even misinterpreting uh, hydroxyquinolone for hydroxychloroquine. But he was actually following the World Health Organization trial standards. The World Health Organization set these levels. This is what I mean by designing a research clinical trial to fail. This study was designed to fail using extraordinarily high levels that can, you know, hydroxychloroquine is an amazing medi medication. It's safe. Millions of, as you've shown, millions of patients are using them and have for long periods of time. But 
at higher doses, the therapeutic window is narrow. So All right. if I, a, a little bit is good, but too much can be dangerous. And right, that window at, is narrow. Let's look at some of the quotes out of this Age of Autism article really quick, because this is really shocking. Right. Um, all right, great. The recovery trial study protocol notes is funded in part by the Wellcome Trust and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and by UK government agencies. The protocol provides the doses of hydroxychloroquine used on page 22. Twitter users began to notice a dosing problem with hashtag, hashtag recovery gate. Now, I want to make this point because we know that Bill Gates and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is already invested in, as I said at the top of the show, I believe it's somewhere around six different attempts at the vaccine. And they are pushing the idea of getting a vaccine for everyone in the world. So you got to ask some questions. If there was a product like hydroxychloroquine that is, you know, 90 or even 80 or even 70 percent effective, it would really remove the need for a vaccination, right? And so why is this group that is profoundly invested in the vaccination doing trials and funding the trials on hydroxychloroquine. Well, now let's look at what they say about these trials. Get ready, folks. How is the drug hydroxychloroquine normally used for chronic daily use in systemic lupus, erythematosus, or rheumatoid arthritis patients receive between 200 and 400 milligrams daily, or a maximum of five milligrams? In acute Q fever, 600 milligrams daily may be given at the start of treatment. For acute attacks of malaria, 2,000 milligrams may be given over the course of three days. Well, the HCQ dosing regimen used in the recovery trial, remember this is the Oxford trial, was 12 tablets during the first 24 hours. 800 milligrams initial dose, 800 milligrams six hours later, 400 milligrams six hours later, and then another 400 milligrams six hours later. Then 400 milligrams every 12 hours for nine more days. This is 2.4 grams during the first 24 hours, an accumulative dose of 9.2 grams over 10 days. The recovery trial also used 1.86 grams um, of hydroxychloroquine, 2,400 milligrams of hydroxychloroquine in the first 24 hours treatment of already very ill hospitalized. Look, it goes on to say the Canadian-Norwegian trials, this is now going to be in the WHO trials, used 2,000 milligrams of HCQ or 1.55 grams of HCQ base in the first 24 hours. Each trial gave patients a cumulative dose during the first 20 hours that, 24 hours that when given as a single dose has been documented to be lethal. The drug's half-life is about a month, so the cumulative amount is important. The WHO had hired a consultant to explore the toxicity of hydroxychloroquine in 1979. The consultant, H. Weniger, looked at 335 episodes of adult poisoning by chloroquine drugs. Wegner on page 5 notes that a single dose of 1.5 to 2 grams of hydroxychloroquine base may be fatal. Jim, are mm. you telling me the WHO knows from their own studies all the way back in 1979 that 1 1.5 to 2 grams is a lethal dose and that seems to be where they started their numbers in their trials at the WHO. That's right, and Oxford all by themselves, ironically, are right in the same space of over 2 milligrams, 2.4, 2.5. I mean, how do you explain this? That's it, Bill. Yeah, well, you can explain it. This is a study designed by the World Health Organization that is not only designed to fail, it's designed to kill. And that that studies are showing a very high case fatality rate of 25.7. Compare that, 25.7% of the patients in these studies are dying, and that study is still going on. So I call on the World Health Organization to stop the study. Their study is designed and is killing people at a rate that is extraordinary. If you dose this medication properly, as Dr. Raul has shown, you have well over, a, 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 I think his, uh, case fatality rate was 0.75%, Dell. Wow. Um, let's go back to the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates. They yeah. also, um, Age of Autism exposed that five members of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation took part in the meetings that designed this World Health Organization trial. Bill wow. Gates is the number one funder of the World Health Organization. It's a co-opted organization. 
I, I would, in my opinion, Bill and Melinda Gates are creating a market for vaccines by building trials that are designed to fail, designed to kill, to seed fear, uh, uncertainty, and doubt. And, and it, this is deadly. We cannot trust our public health agencies. We can't trust these charitable organizations. They are not being charitable to the public. They are, they are creating deadly protocols, and it's just got to stop. The World Health Organization knew that these doses could be potentially fatal, and yet they, they promulgated them. And, you know, it's interesting because India, Spain, multiple other countries, when they finally saw the protocol, the dosing, they said, wait a second, that's four times higher. Brazil had conducted a study um, where they had a high dose arm of 1200 milligrams 1, that they stopped in April because it was causing a, a higher rate of complications. 1200 milligrams. Now, 1200 milligrams is the same dose. It, it's half. It's half. And it's the same the dose that the that. FDA relied upon in the Tang study to revoke this authorization. And in doing so, what they're doing is they're sending a chill in the medical community so that we may not, you know, we may be um, withholding this potentially life-saving medication. We may not be treating early. We may not be able to save lives because we have World Health, Bill Gates, the CDC. Uh, the, the, uh, these trials are misleading the public and they're killing and harming the public. It's incredible. And you know, w when you look at it, you, and I wanna ask you a question. You said in Brazil, they had a high dose and a, and a lower dose arm of the study, That's they right. didn't continue the high dose at 1,200, which is still half what the WHO is using. What about the low dose? Did they bag out on that too? No, they continued it and, was, and it was getting great results. The case fatality rate was in, in the 1, 2% range. Wow. So when, when this drug is used appropriately, it saves lives, Dell. But this is, when you do it the way it's being done, contrived by the World Health Organization, it's deadly. That's the nature of the medication. You know, the, the poison is always defined by the dose. So this Absolutely. HCQ, hydroxychloroquine, is a lifesaver when it's used properly. So design you know, studies- let me, let, me, let, me, let me just say, we, and we've been on this for a very long time, Jim, over three months ago or so, we brought up DDR. This guy has been screaming from the mountaintop from day one, really. He already had hydroxychloroquine being used in China studies. He said this. This is, I think, four months ago now. Actually, from all respiratory infections, he's referring to COVID-19, it's probably the easiest to treat. So there is really no reason to get excited anymore. There's really no reason to go get excited and rush to produce a vaccine. In fact, he went on to say that if you do not prescribe hydroxychloroquine, I believe that should be grounds for malpractice. So now put into that into context, you know, when we think of, high, you know, the fact that here's the guy that was really leading the world with hydroxychloroquine and multiple, whether it's in New York, you know, you've got the studies with thousands of people showing incredible success, China, Italy, all over the world, people following Didier Raoult. I believe that Donald Trump made a lot of his decision to take it himself based on this French virologist. Well, let's look at what they, they say in this article about the doses he used. Professor Didier Raoult's group in Marseille used 600 milligrams daily for up to 10 days in 1,061 COVID-19 patients and reported eight deaths, a mortality rate of 0.75% all over 75 years of age. I mean, all of his patients were in the high-risk group over 74 years of age, and only 0.75% of them died. He had a 99 then, 0.25% success rate. But look at this. The mortality rate reported by Landry and Horby, which is at Oxford in the recovery trial, is 34 times higher. They had 34 times the amount of deaths as Didier Raoult. Now, honestly, Jim, I mean, I know there's people out there that still want to believe CNN and MSNBC as they're gunning at hydroxychloroquine, but you cannot explain this. Why? If you have, I mean, and, and, and Raoult has been putting his name on the line every time another study comes out, pointing out the inconsistencies in the Lancet trial. He said, I want to see that data. Show me this data from around the world. He said, by the way, how are you getting EKG heart data out of Africa where I happen to know they don't have EKG machines? 
That was what started right. eroding the Lancet study, right? When everyone started looking at it right. and going to uh, the group that had put it together and say, you better show us this data, and they couldn't, it started falling apart. I mean, honestly, when, you're, when you look at science and you look at math, you have to ask yourself, okay, fool me once, you know, shame on you. Fool me twice. Or again, how is it you keep having the same issue? You point to the Lancet, the FDA points to the Lancet and says, well, it was retracted, but it was one of the reasons we are removing the emergency, but we really like this Oxford study. You do? Why didn't they? How does it make any sense whatsoever when the champions of science all around the world, over 200 successful studies, are talking about 600 milligrams, how does someone decide, great, we'll test that, we'll test your hypothesis, remember, Tony Fauci is behind this, too. He's saying, I don't know if I trust that. I'd like to see some placebo studies to really get to the bottom of it. And when we finally get placebo studies, they ramp it up to four times the amount that anybody is using in a successful trials. I got to believe someone's, in my mind, and you're a doctor, and I hate saying this, I think some of these doctors involved this. This is murder. I mean, this is murder. They are yeah. pulling the trigger. They are using fatal doses to prove some kind of ridiculous point. What do you feel about scientists? You are one. You're a doctor. You know, they're wearing white lab coats. What are they doing to the, the you know, our perception of science right now? Well, they're destroying the integrity of the scientific process. They're destroying the, the integrity of scientific research. They are, you know, we are seeing science subverted to financial biases and, and political agendas. These, you know, safe, effective, and cheap medications that can save lives are, are being, uh, they're being assassinated. The, the, the motive here is to eliminate, cast fear, uncertainty, and doubt on low-cost therapeutics that could be used right now to really save lives uh, and to pave the way for uh, expensive antivirals, for vaccines that they want to mandate on every member of the population. It's, if we have not understood before that science is, is being taken over by the pharmaceutical industry and people like Bill Gates, now we have to see it. I hope this blows up. And, and everybody can understand what's really going on here because public health is being trampled by financial bias and political agendas. We've got to stop it, Dell, and thank God for you for being able to expose it. I mean, all you have to do to see that there's these puppet masters pulling the strings on puppets like Dr. Maria Korkov. You did a great um, comparative you know, uh, video analysis of what she said uh, yeah. kind of laying out the science right. of the trace, the contact tracing yeah. and how asymptomatic spread is so, and then you put it in direct context the next day when the puppet masters pulled her strings and said, Hey, that's inconvenient. Well, that's not a part of our, the a messaging. We're contriving a message here to manipulate the population into believing something that serves us. You know, doctors got to wake up. We'll see this. Doctors are seeing this. They will continue to see this, and they will be, begin to not trust the CDC, not trust the World Health Organization, to see anything that has Bill Gates' fingerprints on it as something that needs to be scrutinized very heavily because the public health is not in the top of their minds, Dell. Dr. Jim Meehan, thank God for you. Thank you for raising the alarm on this, bringing it to our attention. Uh, I know you put your own license at great risk to speak out against Bill and Melinda Gates or the WHO, but the truth will prevail. Thank you for bringing it to us, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. God bless you, Joe. All right, take if you like that clip, then be sure to check out our live broadcast of The High Wire every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Twitter. We'll see you there.